next story involves an abandoned boat from Colorado and panic on the beach at Daytona and a man who drank heavily and woke up without his pants. Perhaps it'll be the start of a new segment on next. We'll call it the most Florida thing we saw today. The boat roared ashore at Daytona, just plowed into the beach with no one on board. The boat was still running. The motor was kicking up water. The Ethel Jean, registered out of Cherry Hills Village, Colorado. It's owned by a businessman named Sam Kaufman. But Sam was apparently back home in Colorado. Communication scaring. There appears to have been a either a burglary or a vandalization on one of our boats in our boat yard. The Ethel Jean was in for repairs when a burglar struck. A burglar fueled by liquid courage. So there's a bunch of liquor bottles that are half full. Jonathan Race told deputies the last thing he remembers is drinking four locos at the 7-Eleven across from the marina. He says he doesn't remember stealing the Ethel Jean, driving it out by the beach, jumping or falling overboard before it ran aground. He also didn't remember leaving his pants on board, complete with his wallet. That's how they found him. Mr. Race says he just remembers waking up on the beach in another man's pants and then walking home after another wild night in Florida. I was unable to reach Sam Kaufman in Cherry Hills Village by phone today to discuss the theft of his boat and apparently also the theft of a pair of pants kept on board. That suspect is facing charges of burglary and grand theft of a motor vehicle. Apparently Florida law does not differentiate between grand theft auto and grand theft boat. RTD's rolling out a new update on the long-delayed G-Line train to the west side of town. In lieu of announcing an earlier opening date, they had catchy walk-up music for RTD's boss. You might know this one. All through my city, all through my home. That's right, RTD went with Can't Stop the Feeling, which is interesting because you could stop the feeling if it was riding an RTD train. It it'll stop for all kinds of delays. And if you had stuck the feeling on the G line, well, it would have just sat there since last October. Now, RTD is going to think we're trolls, but empty the sunshine from your pockets and you're looking at a pant load of missed deadlines. Here's Steve Steger. RTD General Manager Dave Genova is standing in a tough spot. He's standing atop a 30 plus million dollar transit center built by the city of Arvada. The city spent extra money to get it ready in time to meet RTD's original G-Line deadline of October. And he's standing here to report some eight months later, that line still isn't open. Our goal is to open it sooner rather than later. We would love to open it this year. The hope was a test train would pass through this news conference, but you know, delays. RTD began testing the G-Line again earlier this month, but Genova said today they can't test the part that's giving the A-Line trouble. Uh, we have a permission to test certain things on the system, but we'll need further permission from the FRA and the PUC to test the wireless crossing technology uh, at a later date. RTD told us earlier this month it could be 2018 before passengers are allowed on the G-Line. We broke the news to city leaders who weren't happy. I'm not a happy camper. But RTD acknowledged again today they can't definitively say passengers will be on the G-Line before the end of the year. Now earlier this month, Denver Transit Partners, which runs the system, said the technology wasn't available to fix the problems the feds have with the system. Geneva said today that RTD has denied that claim and is working with DTP to come up with a solution. And the agency did say that the federal government has approved an advised system, a revised system, and is sending a team out in the coming weeks to verify that the whole thing is working. So there will be people who say to us, don't criticize the train. You're going to make it harder for people to vote for funding for the train. I would turn that around and ask RTD, are you concerned that the delays, the missed deadlines, impact the ability to pass future funding? We asked RTD that very question, their response, there are no funding measures currently on the table. Not quite an answer, but I appreciate you asking. All right, Steve, thank you so much. We do not make a habit of talking about President Trump's tweets or comments. There is plenty of national news coverage on that. But his decision today to demean a journalist by mocking her looks and calling her crazy, that, coming from the President of the United States, that provides some dangerous cover for the kind of misogynist garbage that is heaped on too many of our female coworkers here. Women whose work as professional journalists is met with comments about their bodies or their emotions. 
That actually came up in a recent conversation with our Adele Arakawa. Gender has always been a factor uh, in my career path. Social media, oh my gosh, I, I don't engage as I should, but I don't know if I would survive, really. If, if I know I'm pretty thick-skinned, I don't know if I'm that thick-skinned. Because for all the trolls and the nasty comments <laughs> that everybody in the business gets, women in the television business get a special kind of just nasty, disgusting vitriol. That's too bad. Does it, does it ever get to you? No, it really doesn't. Adele's acknowledged that she's been able to avoid some of the disgusting vitriol thrown at women in journalism by walling herself off from some social media. That is, to use the president's own phrase, sad. Law enforcement does not apparently do a trademark search before they name their big drug bus, and that is how we ended up with this week's Operation Toker Poker, the largest post-legalization pot bust in Colorado history, which shares a name with a completely legal marijuana paraphernalia company, Toker Poker, based out of Grand Junction. I talked with the owner today. My own mom called me and she was like, what is going on? Are you behind any of this? And it was like, no, mom, I promise. Like, this is, this is, trust me, it has nothing to do with our company. Um, so it, you know, I think it's, uh, I think we're going to see an impact seriously. Though. I think we're going to see an impact here in the upcoming days. I mean, when you previously, if you search Toker Poker on Google, we were on the front page. We were, you know, covering all, you know, pretty much the, the entire first page. Now you search Toker Poker and uh, you pretty much find everything about this this uh, you know drug operation he told me today that his hope is that things are just going to blow over the uh, proverbial smoke will clear and they'll return to normalcy and Google so I spend a lot of time in the field as you know and when I'm out there a lot of people ask me what's it like to work with Adele Arakawa please watch your step well I guess one way I would put it, familiar. Oh, hi, Adele. Please keep clear of the doors. You are delaying the departure of this elevator. She has a very commanding personality. So how's it going? Hold on, please. We are approaching the second floor. That's what it is, the DIA train. That's where I recognize her from. Anything fun planned for retirement? The door is closing. This train is departing. Adele, I'm gonna miss you like heck. You've been a pleasure to work with. You've made me a better journalist, a better person. Happy retirement. Please hold on. This train is departing. DIA says they'll eventually use a different voice on the train, but for now, Adele will remain a guiding voice in all our lives. Perhaps you too saw the pictures of the protesters being dragged in their wheelchairs out of Senator Cory Gardner's office last night, and perhaps you also thought, did they really think that their sit-in was going to change his vote on the health care bill? Just out of jail today, one of those protesters pointed out to us, police took them to a bus with a wheelchair lift, and she asked us, how do you suppose those ever came about? Ladies and gentlemen, our office and the building are now closed for the night. We, the building management has informed us today that we are in violation of our lease by allowing you to remain in the office any further. Mm -hmm. From this point forward, you can no longer remain in our office or the building. Our staff also need to exit the office. If you require any transport to get home, we are happy to help direct you to public transit options or to arrange for private wheelchair accessible transportation for you as well. Um, but you can no longer remain in our office at this time. We'd rather go to jail than die And with that, 10 activists went to jail, including Carrie Ann Lucas, who talked with our producer Katie Wilcox outside the jail while waiting for the other nine to be released. Did you know yesterday that you might go to jail for this? Well, we knew that from the time we went in. It's always a possibility when you're when you're protesting and, and we're, we're holding a sit-in like that. Um, but it, it, this is too important and too critical, and people's lives will be lost. People will die unnecessarily. Do you think going to jail worked? We've seen it work many times. Last night, I, I was arrested, and I was put on an RTD bus that had a lift. We're coming up next week on the 39th anniversary 
of a protest that shut down the intersection of Colfax and Broadway for two days to fight to get lifts on buses, on our on RTD buses. That protest is credited with helping to start the Americans with Disabilities Act and getting ramps on RTD buses. This week, disability rights activists with the group ADAPT held sit-ins at Senate offices across the country, leading to dozens of arrests. And today, Democratic Lieutenant Governor Donald Lynn sent the group this letter, saying that the health care bill, as is, would ultimately cost Colorado $1.5 billion in Medicaid funding, but offering no specific details on how that would happen. The governor's office believes that the bill is going to force higher premiums, or lesser services, or perhaps both. Republicans have long fought to reduce the number of able-bodied people who are on Medicaid in order to lower the deficit. Our next question came from every direction today, email, Facebook, and on Twitter, where The Wilderness asked, hey next, any info on Colorado's plans to turn over voter information to Trump's fraudulent voter fraud commission? All right, so let's tackle this in two parts. First, President Trump's voter fraud commission. Remember now, Colorado's former Secretary of State, a Republican, did a widespread search for voter fraud. It resulted in one conviction. The president's looking for evidence to back up his unsupported claim of three to five million illegal votes. And he's certainly welcome to look, just like he's welcome to spend money on unicorn traps or asteroid deflecting helmets for every American. But now to Colorado's role in this. Colorado's Secretary of State is following the law by providing public voter records to the Trump administration, just like they would have to provide those records to you or to me if we asked. That's what public record means. Now, Democrats are attacking Secretary of State Wayne Williams because he's a Republican and because they oppose President Trump. Those aren't valid reasons to ignore Colorado's open records laws. Those laws protect your right to know. If the state denies someone's right to know based on their politics, or based on your politics, that's a scary situation. Here's the deal, if you don't want voter records to be public, convince the state legislature to change the law, but don't lean on the government to deny open records to the people you don't like.